Uh, hi, it's um, hi everyone. I'm Dr. Satina Ranagare. So I'm a consultant nephrologist and transplant physician at Apollo Health City, and uh, that's my hospital which you're looking at. It's look really pretty in the night with the lights on and all. Uh, so today we'll be talking about hemodialysis and uh, what are the principles of hemodialysis and uh, how do we manage what are the different types of dialysis we have and all. And basically, I'll be introducing uh, to you what exactly is the hemodialysis and uh, uh, so let's go through it and uh, the first uh, uh, we'll go through the introduction slide and uh, <coughs> we'll uh, talk a little bit on the history and uh, we'll also look at uh, what are the mechanisms of so solute removal or basically what is the uh, physiology of dialysis and what are the different types of dialysis techniques and how do we assess the dialysis and what other methods of dialysis we have. Now with this, I'll start with the definition. The, the term dialysis comes from a Greek word called uh, dialysis, which means dissolution. So what are you, uh, it's basically two words, which is dia, which is through, and the lysis, which means loosening or splitting. Uh, so basically you are trying to uh, remove waste and uh, excess water from the blood. So you're trying to remove two things, which is getting lysed. That's the word dialysis comes from. Now uh, dialysis is basically a bidirectional movement. So it's a movement of mo molecules across the semi-permeable membrane. Now, uh, when this takes uh, through, uh, uh, when this takes place across the artificial membrane, which is uh, which when it comes in contact with the blood, this is called as hemodialysis. Now, dialysis is just a process. When it happens in the blood, it's called hemodialysis. So, uh, so what is uh, the uh, simple dialysis is just nothing but a movement of solute across a semi-permeable membrane. When it happens in the blood, it's called hemodialysis. Now, uh, the first gentleman who uh, uh, introduced the concept of uh, movement of solutes across the semi permeable membrane is Thomas Graham. In the, he lived from 1805 to 1869. So he first demonstrated uh, the movement of, uh, in, he's from Glasgow, Scotland, I think it's in uh, 1850, when he first showed, uh, showed the, an experiment which uh, demonstrated the movement of uh, uh, no molecules across uh, the permeable membrane. So there he used a, a pergamon on paper and then showed that uh, the solutes can be moved across the membrane when there's a, sol uh, when there's a gradient. Now, uh, the next uh, gentleman is uh, Huller, uh, Huller who synthesizes urea and uh, he first described the urea and its uh, structure and uh, its properties also. The next gentleman is uh, Abel Rountree and uh, he is uh, in turn, uh, there are two people. Uh, they work at uh, John Hopkins University and they first performed the dialysis on the dogs. Now the membrane they used is a cellulose trinitrate membrane and they used anticoagulation because the blood should not clot, mm -hmm. we should use anticoagulation in dialysis. Mm -hmm. Anticoagulation in dialysis. Now what they use for anticoagulation is the hirudin. And the first hemodialysis was performed by a German Nazi in the year 1924. And uh, it was by Dr. Haas. But unfortunately, there was a lot of complications uh, for his um, uh, first dialysis and he had, had to actually abandon the procedure. Now, what Haas has used is a colloid uh, tube, which was arranged uh, parallelly. And then uh, he used the same hirudin membrane, uh, hirudin uh, uh, compound to, as an anticoagulant because when the blood comes out of the body, it coagulates. So when blood passes through the uh, through these tubes, it should not get coagulated. So we have to use anticoagulation. So currently we're using heparin, but initially when we don't have heparin, they used to use these things. But hirudin is, uh, they derived this compound from the leech. It has a lot of impurities and it led to reactions and he has to abandon his procedure. Now, uh, the first dialysis, actual working dialysis uh, was uh, done by a Dutch physician by name uh, John, uh, John Koff. So he first uh, constructed his first dialyzer in 1943. We call it the Paul dialyzer. It's a Dutch physician, but again, the experiment was uh, uh, just a continuation of uh, Dr. Haas uh, in the Nazi-occupied uh, Netherlands. Now, what he did was he uh, uh, he developed a rotating drum. Now, the concept of rotating drum is uh, used, used, used as a dialyzer, and he used the cellophane membrane. Cellophane membranes at that time they used to use um, to cover the uh, uh, sausages. Uh, it's called the sausage casings, and uh, it was um, and it, there was an immersion bath also in this. So basically, it's a drum which uh, which is uh, which have these cartridges kind of things, which are sausage casings, and then blood flows through, and this um, cellophane membrane will act as the uh, uh, semi permeable membrane. So that was the first uh, successful human dialysis which was done. And uh, the next thing was uh, the Alval dialyzer. 
which was in 1937, the first ever uh, hemodialysis treatment, which was done in Sweden. So there's something called as alveol kidney or working model of alveol kidney. It's a huge model. I think it's in the next slide. I can just say, change the slide, Lavanya. Uh, so the alveol kidney model uh, is the, yeah, this is the thing. Uh, so uh, that the, uh, the, this is similar to what uh, Dr. Paul did, uh, but this was uh, working better than uh, the Paul drum dialyzers. Uh, so now this is the this is about uh, the concept of dialysis. Now let's look at the axis. Now for to do dialysis, uh, we need two things. One is the artery and the fistula. We take the blood through the arteries and uh, we pump the blood into the uh, vein. Now when we join these two, it's called a fistula, IV fistula. So the first uh, uh, person to do this was Schubner. We call it the Schubner shunt. It's nothing but a metallic. Uh, shunt kind of things, which uh, they keep in between uh, the radial artery and the cephalic vein, mm -hmm. and uh, they draw the blood, and then uh, mm -hmm. they draw the blood, and then use for the di dialysis. And uh, the first actual atriovenous fistula was done by Simino and Brescia. It's called the Simino Brescia fistula in the ninth year, nineteen sixty-six. The problem with the Schibner shunt was it's a foreign body. When it's inside the body, uh, uh, it caused a lot of infections. Uh, now, since we have uh, we, you know, you know, kindly pair uh, idea on uh, what the dialysis history and uh, the access is, let's look at uh, the proper indications for the dialysis, which I've spoken in the, my previous uh, presentation also. There's something called as emergency indication and uh, non-emergency indications. The emergency indications are mostly your hyperkalemia, uh, fluid overload, which are not responding to the treatment, and metabolic acidosis, severe metabolic acidosis and uremic encephalopathy, uremic pericarditis, and uremic bleeding. These are the emergency indications. Encephalopathy can be anything. It be, can be a simple confusion or myoclonic jerks and involuntary movements, food drops. It can be anything. And uh, the non-emergency indications also, which like uremic symptoms like persistent nausea, persistent vomiting, the severe anorexia, and all those things. Let's come to the principles of the dialysis. The three principles basically involved in the dialysis. One is the diffusion the convection and the ultrafiltration. Now, what is diffusion? I've already spoken uh, about the diffusion partly. It is nothing but the movement of the solute from a high concentration gradient to a lower concentration gradient through a semi-permeable membrane. Now, what are the solutes you are talking about? Here in this, we have multiple solutes, but mostly what we use is urea, creatine, phosphorus, and all these are all uh, uremic toxins, which we generally measure. So in hemodialysis, particularly, we'll be talking about urea because it was the most uh, studied uh, uh, solute in the dialysis. So urea is dissolved in a solvent, which is the blood, and passes through a semi-permeable membrane, which is the dialyzer, to an area of uh, lower concentration, which is the dialysate. So you have a membrane, which is a dialyzer membrane, and you have blood passing on the one side, and you have dialysate passing on the other side. You have a high concentration of urea in the... Of urea on the blood side, and you have low concentration of urea on the dialysate side, and it keeps moving across the semi permeable membrane. Now, what is convection? Convection is nothing but the movement of solutes across uh, the uh, across the semi permeable membrane when the water moves or solute uh, when the fluid moves into it. So, to simply understand, let's put it like this you have some grains on the floor, and when you throw water on the floor, the water takes the grains across or the sand grains across. Similarly, when high volume of water passes through the convention, uh, through the semi-permeable membrane, it takes some solutes. That's nothing but convection. Uh, convection. So this is the uh, convection. The last thing we have is the ultrafiltration, which is nothing but the movement of water. So basically, two important things is diffusion, which is concentration dependent. So it removes the solutes. It's a major mechanism of uh, major physiology in the dialysis, hemodialysis. And it mainly works for the small molecular weight substance because the pores are very small. The larger molecular weight substance will not go. On the other side, convection is pressure dependent because uh, you have to push the water across the semi-permeable membrane. It depends upon the pressure. So it's mostly for the removal of fluid and larger, uh, larger molecular weight substances. So the concept of convection comes into picture when we are doing hemofiltration. Uh, hemofiltration is another form of dialysis, which is advanced form of dialysis, which I'll be talking about later. So for basically, you have hemodialysis and this hemofiltration. We will not do hemofiltration alone. Generally, what we do is hemodiafiltration, which is a combination of diffusion with convection. Now, what is osmosis? Osmosis is nothing but movement of the water across the membrane into the higher concentration substance. Now, why I'm talking about osmosis here is 
Osmosis doesn't come into picture in hemodialysis, whereas osmosis comes into picture when you are doing peritoneal dialysis. Now, what happens in peritoneal dialysis is like whenever you have a patient of chronic kidney disease, whenever you have a patient of chronic kidney disease, you have two options to him, three options at that, uh, to be precise. One is dialysis, the other one is the transplant. In the dialysis, you have two options, either the hemodialysis or the peritoneal dialysis. Now, the concept of osmosis comes into picture when you're doing peritoneal dialysis. In peritoneal dialysis, what you do is you put a small catheter in your stomach and you use this catheter to fill that uh, uh, to fill uh, the peritoneum in with uh, high dextrose concentration fluids. Now, this the same thing happens here. Uh, can you go back a slide, Lavanya, please? So now what happens here is, uh, so assume that on the left side of your, uh, <clears throat> left side of the slide, you have concentrated sugar solution, which is the solution which actually you put into your abdomen and it, will have, it has high glucose concentration. Uh, because it has high glucose concentration, it has to be neutralized and water, water along with uh, some solutes comes into the peritoneum, which will be drained later. So this is the concept of peritoneal dialysis. The same thing happens. So uh, the water comes from the diluted uh, sugar solution or the body fluids into the concentrated, into the peritoneal compartment, and then you drain the fluid. Now, this is the peritoneal uh, dialysis concept. And the, the next is, uh, so I'll, be, I'll, be, I'll not be talking much on the peritoneal dialysis because it, uh, per se will be a separate uh, topic by itself. So we'll go to the apparatus of the hemodialysis. So hemodialysis basically has uh, four apparatus. Basically, we have a dialyzer. We have a dialysis solution, we call it dialysate in uh, this thing. And we have a tubings for transport of the blood and dialysis solutions. And we have a machine to power and mechanically monitor the procedure. So these are the apparatus of the hemodialysis. You can change the slide now. Please. So this is the apparatus of the hemodialysis. And uh, the circuit of the hemodialysis is like this. You have uh, a fistula or a temporary access, which is called a dialysis catheter. Uh, dialysis catheter has two ports. One is the arterial port, which will be demonstrated as red one. The other one is venous port, which is demonstrated as a blue one. Whereas in the AV fistula, you have uh, a single vein segment where you will put two needles. One will act as artery. You take the blood from that. Uh, you can change the slide. So you take the blood from the arterial circuit and then it passes through the machine and the dialyzer and it will be uh, uh, cleared of the solutes and then it will be pumped back into the patient to the venous line. Now in this figure, you have you can see there are certain pressure monitors of safety mechanisms in the dialysis machine uh, when we are doing the dialysis. One is the arterial pressure monitor. The other one is the blood pump, which is a which creates a negative pressure as it circulates, and then it will suck the blood from the arterial side. We have a heparin injection. That's the anticoagulant which I'll be talking, uh, which I have talked in the initial uh, slides. So heparin uh, infusion is to prevent the uh, coagulation of the blood, and once it mixes the heparin, it passes through the dialyzer and then get purified. And then it will be returned back. And while pumping back into the uh, venous segment also, we have a venous pressure monitor. So if there's any problem in the needles, if there's any air, if there's any blood, if there's any problem, automatically the pressure sensors will uh, get activated and uh, the entire dialysis circuit will be closed. Now, this is the advanced uh, newer machines which we have in the, for the past 10 years. We have these machines where you have so many safety mechanisms. Uh, to prevent uh, unnecessary complications during the dialysis.